You know, it's not your typical elevate night. God, God is speaking to the body of Christ. I'm telling you right now, there's just, God is speaking to his people. Whether you perceive it or not, once again, it's on you. But I'm, I'm praying that tonight that your eyes are being fixed on him more than ever in the, in the history of your walk with God, whether it's been one week or whether it's been 30 years. God, God wants to do something. So don't be the person that sits in here tonight and says, look, I already know that. No, you don't. None of, us, none of us have mastered this, what I'm going to share tonight. But how many know that, that God wants us to establish a culture of honor in our life, in our homes, in our family, in the workplace, in the body of Christ, in the church? How many know that that's God's greatest desire, that we would get a revelation of what honor means in this culture called kingdom culture. How many believe that God, that's what God wants for us, right? And so I want to talk to you about this because I want you to know that the power that honor has can produce some amazing blessings, but dishonor can short circuit the breakthroughs, the blessings that you've been looking for. Even some of the things that you're trying to to step into can can literally mess some things up. How many know that when you have dishonor in your life, it affects not only you, it affects your children and your children's children. It begins to affect the people you work with. There's something about honor that, that God has so clearly spoken to us for a divine reason and a divine purpose. So I want you to really lean in tonight and, and, and get this message. Let me start with the simple definition of honor. They're going to put it on the screen. And if you're a note taker, if you go to our church app, I have our note, my notes on there tonight. So if you want to like take those notes and do the fill-ins, take it home and say that this is the year, Lord, where I'm getting honor back. Amen? Okay, so here's the definition of honor. It's the esteem due. Everybody say the esteem due. Who is due for some esteem at your workplace? Who is due some esteem in your family? Now you may say, well, I already, I love my family. I didn't, I didn't ask you whether you love your family. I asked, who do you owe or who is due some esteem right now that you can think of? Now, here's how it's going to work for you probably in your thinking. You're going to think about someone you already care and love. I'm thinking more about that coworker you don't like. They're due some esteem. I'm talking about that boss right now that you can't stand, that you pray for to get fired. <laughs> like I pray for my boss, all right. Yeah, I pray that he's out. Yeah, yeah. Some of you got tickled there a little bit, huh? Amen. But but listen, this word honor means the esteem due, or look. At, I love this one, or it means paid. To worth. Paid. In other words, honor requires sacrifice. There is a price that one must pay to live a life of honor. And I'm going to explain what that honor looks like in kingdom. But there's a price to pray, pay for honor. There's a sacrifice that must be required in order for us to walk in the honor that God has already explained to us in scripture. But it also says, when you and I give honor to people, you're bringing worth back into them. And I know that this is how we think in our culture today. Well, you know what? When you respect me, I'll honor you. When you treat me right, then I'll honor you. When you earn my respect, I'll respect you. Because you got to earn my respect. And all the Christians said, amen. <laughs> That's your problem. <laughs> like, amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's, that's not the right amen. Amen? Yeah, wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the no. L let me give you a quick example, and then I got to get in this. Remember the woman that was caught in adultery? And she was being chased by all the Pharisees and Sadducees, and they had rocks, you guys remember? And they were going to stone her to death. 
And what was interesting is Jesus was just chilling, man. He's just, he's on the ground, man. And this girl makes it to him. I really believe that she knew who to run to. She knew that this Jesus was someone of worth. Think about it. How do you fall in the presence of Jesus while you're being chased with rocks? And you know the story, how it goes, right? He's sitting on the floor, and the Bible says that, man, he's just drawing and writing on the floor. Who knows what he was writing? Maybe he was writing forgiven. Maybe he was writing honor. I don't know what he was writing. I could only begin to make up my own assumption based on the character of Jesus. Maybe he was writing love. I don't know what he was writing, but I bet you he was writing something that had to connect with what was about to happen. And so she's there. She's on the floor. She's already been, she's got a little beating already, right? And, and Jesus is sitting there, and they try to test him, the Bible says. And they tested him in this place called honor. And they said, okay, you Jesus, you know you're that honorable type of guy. What do you think she deserves? She got caught in the very act of adultery. You know she deserves to be stoned. And Jesus stayed quiet and just kept writing on the sand. And I just love how Jesus responds. I love because Jesus never reacts, he responds. See, honor does not react, honor responds. When you react, you dishonor. And we all got a little reaction in us. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Trust me. Including moi right here. And Jesus says, okay, whichever of you has no sin, cast your first stone. And one by one, all they heard was the sound of rocks dropping to the ground. And Jesus looked at the woman who was in, in complete fear and, and just, you could only imagine the shame, the guilt, the condemnation, everything she was experiencing in her own life. And Jesus said, where are your accusers? And we know that she looks up, looks, and she says, they're not here, Lord. He said, sin no more. Now, now, check this out. What was he doing? He was giving her back her worth. That's what honor is. Honor is you giving back someone's worth. Not because they deserve it, but because that's who I am. I give you worth. See, that's kingdom honor. World, world honor is always about entitlement. It's always about you have to do this in order for me to do that. And that just, that's, that's twisted. It's, it's not right. And so it says it's paid to worth. And we know that Jesus paid the price on the cross. When you and I didn't deserve it, he died an honorable death so that you and I can have life. Amen. And so it says it's also high, es what's that word? Estimation, mathematical right? It's a high estimation. In other words, it's a big price. When you honor people, man, let me tell you something. You're giving them a high estimation. In other words, you being in my life, Erica, man, your value goes up higher. That's how it should be in our relationships. Steve, you and I, we hang out. You, your worth goes higher. See, that's the honor we bring. When you and I have relationships, we bring them higher the estimation goes higher that's honor i bring his worth to a whole nother level are you guys getting this because if you listen i I'm, I'm i'm i need to share this with you because you'll see why it is so important to get honor back into your life are you ready for this message okay so the greatest temptation to be dishonorable with your family friends co-workers Bosses, pastors, okay, let, let, I'm, I'm going to say it. The greatest temptation is going to be familiarity and comfortability. See, it's amazing when you first meet someone, man, you think they, you put them on high esteem. 
until you get to know them. And then we start dropping the what? Value. That's the temptation. The temptation is you not being consistent in bringing the same amount, if not more worth, to the person that you call friend, coworker, son, daughter, boss, shepherd, whatever. We, 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 we are to add, as much as I want to add value to you, you have to add value to me as well. Amen? Come on, what you put in is what you get out. Whatever you put into someone's life is what you're going to get out. And so being familiar with someone begins to get you to a place where you start treating people less than. You have, they, they, they're, they're not as important anymore. Uh, you become careless with your words. You become careless with your actions. And it's because you've gotten so comfortable and so familiar with the person that you just don't view them the same way. And, and that's where we see that our culture today, I mean, in this culture today, Everybody's got a microphone. Everybody has an opinion. As a matter of fact, it is popular to be dishonorable. If you want, if you want popularity, start talking crap. Start gossiping about people. Start putting out your two cents out there and act like you're being hashtag, you know, humble brag. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hashtag false humility, right? Like, well, like I'm seeing a lot of this right now with politics because I, I know we're coming close to election and everyone's like well you know everyone can uh, vote for who they want but <laughs> it's like we, we we start we start that that division that that striving that ah, we start getting into that dishonor place and and we we start looking like the world no wonder the world wants sometimes nothing to do with Christianity because it's not that they have an issue with Jesus it's that they have an issue with Christians they love Jesus. They don't like Christians. They said, well, man, if, if you weren't in the church, I'd probably go to it. <laughs> and so it's when you start thinking, oh, it's just so-and-so. That's dishonor. Now let's look at the scripture quickly. Matthew 13, verse 54 through 58. It says, he returned. Who returned? Jesus. He returned to Nazareth. His what? His hometown. Come on. Don't get comfortable at Elevate Church. Don't start getting so familiar with me or our leadership or our team or our staff or our volunteers. Don't get familiar. Don't get, don't get it twisted. Amen? We got we to gotta, we gotta, we gotta respect. We got to honor. And I don't demand it. It's, it's who you are or not. Now look at this. Let's look at the scripture. And when he returned to Nazareth, when he returned to his hometown, when he taught there in the synagogue... Everyone was amazed and said, where does he get this wisdom and this power to do what? To do what? Okay, stay with me. Then they scoffed. He's just the carpenter's son. And we know Mary. I mean, it's just his mom. And his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. All his sisters live right here among us. Where did he learn all these things? See how they started bringing it. The, they already knew. They first started. See, that's so hypocritical, right? Like, dang, this dude is wise. Wow, he does great miracles. And it's amazing how though you know someone's worth and value, that you would begin to, to reduce someone's value based on your opinion. And so here you have, they're like, isn't he, isn't he that carpenter's son? Isn't that Mary's son? Isn't that Joseph's brother? Isn't that, and he keeps going and going. And he says this, and a prophet is, look at this. Jesus told him, a prophet is what? Y'all with me? Y'all? Okay, okay, let's, yeah, this is where you work with me. Okay, well, I'm sorry? I work alone, ma'am. Please stop. <laughs> Honor me, will you? I'm just playing, girl. I'm just playing. Look at this. And then Jesus told them. Okay. I didn't ask you to read it, but that's okay. <laughs> A prophet. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let me read. A prophet is honored everywhere except his own hometown and among his own 
And so, and so, and because a prophet is not honored in his own hometown, in his own family, in his own church, in his own workplace, in his own, you, you finish the sentence, he said, so he did not do many mighty works there. There's something about honor that's attached to miracles. There's something about honor that's attached to breakthroughs. There's something about honor that's attached to God taking you to the next level. Stay with me. He says he did not do. He didn't. So he did not do many mighty works. And I don't know about you, but I want God to do some mighty works in 2020 in my life, in my family, in my church, with my children, with your life. Amen. Not if you don't have honor. So he did not do many mighty works there because of their what? Unbelief. And so in the previous chapter, if you read this story, Jesus travels to Capernaum. He goes there. He shows up. And he said, and he healed them all. One chapter later, and he did not do many great Mighty works, miracles there. Why? Because they dishonored him. Chapter before that, everyone got healed. Chapter later, I can't do nothing here. I I can't do nothing here. In his own hometown, he could not perform many mighty miracles because he wasn't being shown honor. Listen. Dishonor will cut off God's power in your life. When you live a dishonorable life, you will literally cut the power of God off your life. I'll say it this way. You will limit God's power in your life. Like he might do some mighty works. He might do some miracles, but he won't always do mighty works and he won't always do miracles. And so... It's so key because these people were so comfortable with Jesus that they limited what Jesus could do for them. And and it's not that he couldn't do great miracles or do great mighty works, but there was dishonor that cut themselves off from everyone experiencing what the people experienced at Capernaum. I mean, just think about this. It's in the Bible for a reason. He's putting this in the scriptures for us to realize that if we want to see a breakthrough, if we want to see miracles, if we want to see the outpouring of God, we got to get honor back in our life. It's so, it's so important. Don't get so familiar with Jesus. Don't get so, don't come in here kind of like, okay, they're doing their songs. That's familiar. You don't come in here sitting, a, you know, well, I'm going to church because it's the, it's the Sunday thing to do. It's the Wednesday thing to do. No, don't get, don't get so familiar with this. You got to come in here with an expectation. I came to seek Jesus. Amen. Come on. You, you can, because listen, if not, then every time you come in here, you leave disappointed because you came looking for man instead of looking for the one that we came to honor. Amen. And I'll say it this way. But if you can't honor the man you see, how will you honor the God you can't see? That's why honor is so important at work, everywhere, with the people you do life with. God God is attaching his power to honor. It's so key. And so these people got all familiar and, 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 and they literally cut off the miracles, the signs, the wonders, even the wisdom of God. And I know there's a lot of us here that we need some wisdom right now on making some decisions. When you work on honor in your life, let me tell you something. God's wisdom will be dropped on you. You'll know what decisions to make. You'll know who to hook up with, who to link up with, who to do life with, who to do business with. You'll know how to make the next decision for whatever it is that you need to accomplish. But you have to have honor back in your life. They lacked it. They lacked it. Your level of honor, if you're a note taker, your level of honor is reciprocated with God's mighty works. But it's at the level of your honor. And every single one of us have a level of honor that we give right now. But it's not a matter of just giving honor. It's about being honorable as a person, as God's kid. In other words, honor will elevate you or it will decimate you. It will reduce you. When you don't have value and worth for people, let me tell you something. It only reduces you. It reduces your worth. It reduces 
your value. As a matter of fact, people don't really want to even follow you. People don't want to even hang with you. When you have honor in your life, it's attractive. It smells good. It looks good. I'm telling you, people look at you like, man, I like you. You know what I'm saying? Listen, when you have honor in your life, it'll bring you before great people. It'll bring you before great men. The favor of God will be upon you. But when you're dishonorable, let me tell you something. Man, you'll always be wondering, you'll always wonder, why is it that she's always blessed and I'm not? Because you probably got some dishonor issues. Are you here tonight? I know Celebrate Night. Y'all were probably expecting something different, but this is what we need. We need to get back to honor. So dishonor will reduce you. And uh, uh, let me show you what dishonor looks like. Because some of you may be thinking right now, like, well, I'm glad he ain't talking to me. Okay, well, let's see. So here's dishonor. Here's dishonor, okay? And, and we've all found this. Dishonor is people that are critical. That's dishonor. If you're critical, always critical about people. If you're judgmental, you're just quick to judge people. You're dishonorable. If you're unloving, you're dishonorable. If you're dishonest, come on, it's tax season. Don't be dishonest. That's dishonor. If you're self-dependent, and I know that there's such a self-dependent movement in our earth right now. Let me tell you something. That's dishonorable. You know why? Because our dependence is in God. That's where our help comes from. And so if you are hypocritical, right, you say one thing, but you do the other. Oh, that's not me. I'm not hypocritical. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and let's validate that. If you say you're going to be somewhere at a certain time or if you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, you're dishonorable. Procrastination, that's dishonorable. And so here's what 1 Peter 2, 17, 19 says. It says, honor what? Love the what? Fear. And then, now let's, let's break this down. Listen, until you learn how to honor the man you can see, you'll never learn to love with perfect love, the brotherhood you can see. Notice, notice how this scripture, this is the New King James. It says he starts with honor all people because then the progression of that is going to be that once I learn to honor people, not based on what they deserve, but based on who I am, my worth, my value, I bring value to you. I bring high estimation to your life. Now I start learning how to love the brotherhood. And when I start learning how to love the brotherhood, here's what happens. You start having a healthy fear and reverence and respect for God. It'll be so heavy for you. It'll, listen, like I'll even bring it to this level. If you're worshiping and you're too tired to worship, you got you to gotta, you gotta be like David. So get track together. Man, you, you didn't come to just hang out in the building. Man, you came to worship the king of kings. If Listen, if the president of the United States walked in here, everybody would stand up, even if you didn't like him. But good thing, but good thing that you're a person of what? Because <laughs> God said what? Come on, haters, let's go. See, man, that just, that, that makes some people twitch up in this place. It's, it's not about party. It's about honor. It, it, it's, it's not about my opinion. It's about honor. You either honor all people or you don't. And, and I love it because he says, then you learn how to love the brotherhood. Then you're going to learn how to fear God. And then we can come into this church. You can go to your house, and now you can honor the king the way he deserves it. But the king can't be honored until you learn how to honor all people. Love the brotherhood so that you can fear God, so that you can be healthy in your reverence for God. And then that's the only way he says, now that's how you honor me, the king of kings. That's powerful right there, isn't it? And so whoever you dishonor is shot off to your life. Remember that. So right now, you don't like that, boss? Listen, here's what I say. I'll say it this way. Uh, eat the fish, spit out the bones. Honor doesn't mean we agree with each other. 
Because there's going to be times where we don't agree. But it doesn't mean I'm, I'm going to lose my value or my worth or even lose your worth or value because I have a strong opinion. Listen, we have to just decide that this is who I am. I am a person of honor, and it's that honor that's going to release the blessing of God in my life. I'm going to honor my boss. I'm going to honor my leaders. I'm going to honor. And you're also training your kids how to live. There is no honor in school anymore. Right? I mean, when I was little, little, I mean, I was scared to even talk back to my mom. I would not dare give her lip because I'd probably be missing a lip after I gave her lip. You know what I'm saying? I probably wouldn't have any teeth. <laughs> yeah. I mean, little, I mean, she would. But today in our culture, there's no, there's no, there's no more honor. Even our kids sometimes. Are, but remember, they're a product of who you are, parents. Your kids are a product of who you are. If you're a dishonorable person, then don't expect anything higher from your children. Because they follow what you do, not what you say. Amen? Amen. So everybody say, let it begin with me. Because if you're waiting for someone to show you respect, you're going to be waiting a long time. See, I could have been waiting for my father to get it right. Guess what? He would have died, and I would have been like, dang. He's dead. But I had, to, I, had to, I had to put high esteem. I had to give him the honor. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother, right? It didn't say, you know, agree with your father and mother. He said, honor your father and mother, and long life will I give you. I know you don't want to hear this, but I'm going to tell you. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm getting honor. Listen, we're getting honor in this house it's a tune-up. It's a faith lift. We're getting honor in this house. Look at your neighbor and be like, man, I'm glad you're honorable. <laughs> Did they look at you funny? If they got a sour puss face, just, just lay your hands on them and be like, Lord, touch them. <laughs> touch them, touch them, heal them. Because here's the deal. The last thing you want to do is to develop a spirit of dishonor because that's what happened to Satan. <laughs> He started dishonoring God the Father. And we know what happened to that dude. <laughs> Listen, he was the first person to bring dishonor. He is, he is the founder of dishonor. He is the creator of dishonor. He is the daddy of dishonor. When you start seeing it like that, you're like, man, I definitely don't want that spirit. I don't want that foul spirit. Because, listen, it'll, 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 it will definitely, it will affect you in every area of your life. It will hinder God's power. God cannot, Jesus, it's not that he couldn't do it. It's that they wouldn't let him. They cut off the power source because they kept treating him familiar. Don't treat God familiar. Don't get so comfortable with God where you no longer have a holy, healthy reverence for who God is. Don't lose your awe of God. When we sing we exalt thee, man, your whole heart has to be in it because you're not doing this for me. You're not doing it for the worship team. Man, you're giving it back to God and you're saying Father, I honor you. And when you honor him, he gives you the strength to honor ugly too. Right? The people you don't like, man, all of a sudden you start liking them. Like, I know I don't like this person. They're annoying. They're like, but I just, I'm starting to like you. You know, like, I I hated you yesterday. Have you ever had someone tell me, like, I had someone, I remember one time at work, people, this one guy came up to me, he's like, man, I didn't like you. I'm like, I didn't ask you, bro. You know, like, <laughs> like no one asked you if you like, I didn't, I didn't ask you if you, if you like, I don't care. But he said this, I, I don't like you, or I didn't like you, but I was wrong about you. And, and see, it was, it was my highest esteem that brought conviction to his life that in return, he came and said, I'm sorry. There's something powerful about honor. It, it releases the power of God. It releases the blessing of God. It releases the anointing of God on your life. It releases the wisdom of God for your life when you learn to honor, but you can have that spirit of honor. And remember, honor is not just what you give to people. It's who you are. You're honorable. Let me give you another verse quickly, and let's get out of here. First Peter 2, 17 and 19, same thing, but this is for all the millennials out there, the TPT version that you like. Oh, 
Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Look at this. Recognize the what? Of every person. And what? Show what? To who? Every believer. To who? Every. Why does it say to every believer? Because, listen, Jesus said, and this is how the world will know me, by how you love one another. So I'm giving you permission. If you ever hear anyone in this church get all funky and weird, being dishonorable, check them in love. Check them. Because we can't cut God's power in this house. We need his power. We need his healing. We need his redemption. We don't need voices of division. We don't need voice. And that's, don't, 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 don't worry. I'm not preaching this because this is happening. No, we're just bringing, this is what the spirit of God is saying. He said, speak on honor. Bring honor back to my kingdom. Bring honor back to my body. Bring honor back. Amen. And that goes to me too right here. I got to make sure that I check myself before I wreck myself too. Amen. So we have to make sure that we're all in this honorable place. He says, recognize the value of every person and continually show love to every believer. Live your lives with great reverence and in holy awe of God. Honor your rulers. Honor those people in authority. Honor the people you work with. It, listen, it's not whether you like them or not. It's who you are or not. You're an honorable person. We need to make sure that we have a spirit of honor in our lives so that it is transcending. It is viable. It is contagious. It is infectious. You want to spread any disease? Spread the disease of honor. Amen? Let it spread like wildfire. Amen? When you start doing that, it changes the spirit in this house in your house, in your workplace, bite your tongue. Someone says something negative to you, just be like, okay, Lord, I bless them. I don't like them, but I bless them. God can handle that. I don't like them, but I'll bless them, Lord. Bless them, Father. Touch their heart. Let me give you another verse. Look at Proverbs 18, 16, says this, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before what? You have the gift of honor. Don't just give it, be it. And watch heaven open over your life. Your breakthrough is attached to your honor. Your cutoff is, is attached to your dishonor. If things aren't moving quickly, if things aren't, there's an, there's an honor issue. We need the honor of Almighty God back in our life so that we can begin to see all the blessings and the breakthroughs and the things. And not just that, but miracles. I want miracles in this house. Man, I want to see the great and mighty works of God in this place. Amen. I want to see the gift of the Holy Spirit operating in this house through God's people. But it's going to require honor. Let's send to our feet. Let's get out of here. Did you guys get that? We're going to do tithes and offerings right now. Don't worry. I know you're asking that. You're so honorable. <laughs> Let's just lift a hand to heaven real quick. Listen, it's a simple message, but it'll wreck your life for good. I'm telling you, we need honor back in our country. We need honor back in our home. We need to train our children to honor. You need that back, man. If, if, it, if, it, if Jesus said he could not do mighty works, there's a reason for that. So there's a reason why maybe there's some, a lack of mighty works and we have to repent. And so I want you to just repeat after me, say, Heavenly Father, I recognize that you value honor because you are honor. You valued me. You paid a dear price for my salvation, for my forgiveness, for my healing. Jesus, I want to be that same person, honorable and always giving honor. That's who I am. I have the character of God. Give me the strength to honor all people, to love the brotherhood, to fear God so I can honor the king. And so tonight, I repent 
for any dishonorable conversations, attitudes, ideas, opinions that I've had that has not honored you or honored them. Please forgive me, Lord, for anything that has been cutting off your power from my life. Tonight, I come back to honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.